This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 362 of the Stable Scoop Radio Show. Polo players and stunt women. Please support our sponsors as they make this show possible. Our sponsors this week are Equisketch and EasySignsOnline.com. On today's show, we catch up with a previous guest, Lady Knight Virginia Hankins, and we chat with two women from the Western New York Polo Club, and we also have our Kickstarter of the week. Welcome to the Stable Scoop, with weekly shows delivered right to you. With Helena and Glenn the Geek, live from the stable, it's every week. They bring you the news through hay or high water, while using their tails as their own fly swatters. So sit on down and laugh till your poop, cause it's time again for Stable School. Stable School. Stable School. This is Glenn the Geek. And this is Helena B. And you're listening to the Stable Scoop Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. Well, howdy, Helena. Howdy, Glenn. I saw a picture that you just posted a little bit ago. It looks like you just went out on a ride today with your daughter. I did. I took Miss Gracie out on her second hack of her lifetime. She's only been out on two hacks in her lifetime? Yep. Wow. Yep. I- I didn't, I didn't realize that. I just she's assumed been, that she'd been hacking everywhere. No, she's been stuck in a ring. She's oh, well, I got to get ring. that girl out. <laughs> <laughs> we had, um, we, it, it's funny. We just never had the opportunity to go out for trail rides. And I don't have a trailer, so it makes it difficult. Unless the conditions are right outside of our back door, we kind of have to stick to the ring. So it's you time. a lot she's, of traffic on the roads there? It's summertime, so we do. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, so unless you're up at 630 in the morning and hacking down the road, um, it's hard because people come to the beach and then there's all kinds of activity in here. All us southern people are up there right now visiting you. It's true. (laughs) That's fine. That's fine. Spend your money. Come here and spend your money. But anyway, so then it just, you know, then by the time dinner comes, you're like, I'm too tired to go out for a hack. So conditions just haven't been right. But this is the year I'm really teaching her to get out there. And Dog Dog is a sweetheart. He's That's very pony? safe. Dog, dog. Yep. Dog, dog. <laughs> yeah. He's not a pony. He's a horse. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, that picture, yep. you were, it just made it look like a pony in that picture. No, it, well, that's because I'm, you know, on Brody kind of right. standing up in my stirrups. So anyway, um, yeah. So, he, you know, I'm just teaching her about how to ride on the road and leg the over to the or? side. She, well, first time we went out, she didn't listen to me. And we were, we were on a curve. And I said, when I cross, you cross. And it's because, you know, I'm staying in the sight line of of traffic. I know that, you know, the rules are you ride with traffic, just like if you're on a bicycle, you know, versus being on foot where you walk on the opposite Mm -hmm. side of traffic. So anyway, I said, you know, around here we have such small winding roads and people drive fast. Just follow me because I'm going to ride where I know cars can see us, you know. Well, she didn't pay attention and she almost got run down by a car coming around a turn real fast. Well, let me tell you, she gained a whole new respect for her mother and for what it means to ride on the road after that. Well, that's good. I mean, at least she got that lesson without getting hurt. So, she did. Right. She did. I mean, you hope that too when she starts driving, right? Jesus. That that first accident is a safe one and then we learn our lesson and it doesn't cost too much. <laughs> so. No blood. If, right. it's, if it's a lesson that can be learned without blood spill or, or bone breakage. Or bone breakage in your case. Yeah. We're all good. So, anyway, um, yeah, so this time we went off. We went off the road down a, a dirt driveway, and there's a farmer that has a field that's just been mowed, you know? It's a small one. It's a small one. But we went off the trail and around the field, and she was just in heaven. Ah, oh, she'll be fox hunting by next year. I know. I was like, <laughs> this is the kind of thing we do when we're out hunting. You you often ride around the farmer's field, and you always ride along the edge and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, your horse is going to peek in the brambles, be prepared, put him to work. It was all that kind of thing. It was fun. 
Yeah, it must be neat to, for you to finally get out with your daughter and ride around, you know? Well, Actually, you do know, some serious trail riding. That's that's fun. When you ride until you're six and a half months pregnant, <laughs> waiting 12 years to go trail riding with that thing that was once in your yeah. belly, <laughs> it's, it's a labor of love. Well, good for you guys. Yeah. That's exciting. It was a lot of fun. And I'm glad you finally got out. You know, we're the same way here. I, I always thought it was just us. Because you know how you see all of these people who have nine to five jobs and they go and they get off work and they go out to the barn and they spend till eight and nine o'clock in the barn. I always feel guilty because, you know, I see all these my, my friends there and our listeners on Facebook who do that. And I get this 530 at night and I'm tired. And it's like <laughs> it's still light till nine, but I don't feel like going out and driving my pony. You know, let's put them out and quit for the night. Go cook yep. dinner. That's what I feel like doing. So I'm not the only one. Good. Thank you very much for validating my uh, concerns. No, don't, don't. Do you remember we did a, an all host show episode once and they were like, tell everybody something that they don't know about you. And I said, I don't like to ride when it's cloudy. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And we all laughed at you. And you all laughed yes. at me. Well, I get dumped when it's cloudy. So. <laughs> And you would never ride in Florida right now. Man, we've had just rain for a month. <laughs> oh, my horse has this like cloud radar. Like, you know. Jennifer went know. out. We've been getting storms all day, every day. And matter of fact, if, if I lose you today, uh, I'll call you back because we've been getting close lightning strikes and power's been going off and the internet's been going out. And, and my our landlord's. Uh, uh, his internet box got fried two days ago because of a lightning strike nearby. So we've had all kinds of stuff here. And Jennifer goes out now and she times the thunderstorms. She looks on the radar and goes, okay, I got 20 minutes between thunderstorms. And it's like thundering all around and she's out there riding. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's the only time you can do it is between I thunderstorms. And, and here we don't get the gentle rain you guys get sometimes. We just get the, it just pours. <laughs> it just... I'll take the pouring predictable rain i'll take that yeah boring predictable rain's better than constant thunderstorms all the time then constant well or no 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 the heavy predictable rain not the oh. sorry, not the gentle predi- sorry i meant the heavy predictable rain i'll take the thunderstorms uh, not when they're then, every day all day <laughs> it's like well they are they really every day all day oh pretty much yeah we we've had thunder all morning since nine o'clock now it's all around us but uh. at some point today we'll get it Mm-hmm. Well, let's uh, let's do this. We got. I know we have lots to talk about today. We got some fun guests, lady guests coming up, and uh, let's do that right after we hear from our sponsors from EasySignsOnline.com. This week's EasySignsOnline.com Spotlight product is their New England style farm signs, their most popular line of signs. New England style farm signs are very durable and designed for long-term outdoor use with no maintenance required, no wood to rot, and no paint to peel. They will outlast the old style painted wood signs by many, many years. They are available in many sizes, shapes, and styles, which makes them the perfect sign for any farm or business. Go online today and go through the EasySignsOnline.com easy step-by-step ordering process to see all the prices and options available. They also offer free, no-obligation sign proofs on all New England-style signs. And you get free shipping as well on all New England-style signs. So replace your old worn-out sign and make a great first impression with a new farm sign from EasySignsOnline.com. Well, coming up next is a guest that we've had on previously, but it was all the way back in September of 2012, episode number 214 here on the Stable Scoop Show. She's an American female fighter, a stunt archer, a mounted weapons trainer, a jouster, and a professional lady knight. Her name is Virginia Hankins, and she is not somebody you want to meet in a dark alley when she's mad. So, hi, Virginia. Hi. <laughs> wow, that's an introduction. Thank you. <laughs> she looks all innocent, but you're going to be in big trouble. So, <laughs> so Virginia, it's so good to have you back again. We, I remember talking to you about being a knight back then, and now you've formed your own entertainment company. Tell us about that. It's incredible. I formed Heroes Entertainment in 2012. Actually, we're coming up on our third anniversary in August. And it's an incredible endeavor. I, it started as one of those, what if I could? 
contest, and it's blossomed into this major corporation. Not quite a corporation, definitely a company. We've got about 15 part-time employees, and we do um, themed entertainment for families, children, hotels, and it's actually sent me around the world since I last talked to you, uh, mostly mermaids. But we also do things like unicorns and knights and princesses, and also, of course, archery is a very, very big one with it. You said you've gone around the world. You have to tell us some of the fun things. Yeah. Uh, well, this one time I was in Paris. <laughs> and I was they all start out this way. Right. Yeah, the one time, time I was in Paris. I was in Paris. <laughs> uh, with I my weapons. As, I know. No, it wasn't weapons. It was actually in tail. I was working as a mermaid at Paris Fashion Week. And I was the first mermaid ever to be at Chateau de Fontainebleau, uh, which is in uh, France, and it's Napoleon's castle. So they'd never had a mermaid before. In the first what, were you in the office. fountain out front? <laughs> Actually, it was a fountain in the courtyard, yes. <laughs> Overlooking <laughs> the garden. Love her. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> but it was about October, and it was kind of raining and extraordinarily cold, and the water was about 55, oh, and we were no. having a cocktail party to celebrate designer out in the courtyard, and I was uh, sent to France to be their mermaid. Um, other notable things has been, like, the night before, trying to find a centaur for a Hollywood director on a popular TV show, and being an official unicorn wrangler at a masquerade ball here in town. But uh, I love the job. It's incredible. And it's really neat because I took all the stuff I learned with stunts and weapons, and I've actually made a company doing it. And now have a bunch of people working for me as either archery coaches or also water instructors, lifeguards, mermaids. And we get to do this stuff a bunch of times a week. And we go all over Southern California. I'm actually going to the Bahamas. In August, uh, teaching a women's retreat how to be mermaids in the Bahamas in the Bermuda Triangle, which I Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Hold on. Back it up. Just back that bus yes. up. You're going to the Bahamas. Which island? Bimini. Oh, my God. Okay. First of all, when is this? Because I need to go. <laughs> well, I think I actually still have one spot remaining. It's the Era Luna Retreat, and it's the end of August, so the last week of August. But we're flying into Bimini, and we're going to be exploring the mangroves and going diving with dolphins and being mermaids and doing photography and exploring the ancient ruins underwater. So it leaves um, on August 27th, and then the crew is coming back on Monday, August 31st. But it's incredible. It's basically a journey to Atlantis theme retreat for women. And we're going to be mermaids and go investigate all the ancient prophecies and have fun in the islands with the dolphins. Let me tell you something. If anybody out there is listening, has the ability to get that 827, that one spot, take it. Bimini was just a hop and a skip from the island of Eleuthera, where I was just two short months ago. And I will tell you, it is the land of mermaids. And even if you don't see a mermaid, go in the water, you will become a mermaid. Promise you that's what will happen. It's the next best thing to riding horses, I swear. This is Ooh. wonderful. It's a lot of fun. Have you been to any of the Bermuda, the um, Bahamas, out islands? No, the closest thing I did was actually cave diving in the cenotes in Mexico. Mm -hmm. which was a little while back, and it was an underwater photography expedition that lasted about two weeks. So it's really nice going back to the Caribbean area um, and returning, obviously, again, with mermaids. <laughs> but I'm really looking forward to it. And I love the tie into the ancient folklore that they're doing, as well as just the sheer variety of the itinerary lineup. I can't wait. We actually are having our very first party this upcoming Friday, and um, the ladies are going to be coming over to my pool and trying on their mermaid fins for the very first time. And I have to take a bunch of people that have never tried this before and in one month's time make them comfortable enough in the water that they can really go live out that dream and go swim around and explore, which should be incredible and life-changing. Th this is so wonderful. I, my heart is just com is filling up with, with joy. I mean, what I'm speechless. I have nothing to say. <laughs> I do. Glenn knows that doesn't happen very often. I could make a fortune selling uh, to guys the spots along the beach where they could stand with their binoculars watching all the mermaids go around. I could make why, a fortune a doing creeper? that. Why you got to be a creeper? This is a women's retreat. <laughs> right? Honestly. Well, I mean, what can I say? I guess he likes tail. <laughs> <laughs> you must get every line in the book. I do, actually. You must. Yeah. <laughs> 
So every line in the book, that's a good one, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's funny. I mean, the oh, number of fish jokes I've learned over the process of this company has been insane, but it's incredible. And it's really just, I mean, talk about stunts. Uh, I got my lifeguard certification. I'm working my rescue diver right now. It's really opened an entirely different world of stunt work for me as well as we are obviously um, doing what I'm sure you guys have been seeing online, Labyrinth of Jareth Masquerade Balls coming up for us in August. Yeah, explain that. I, I saw you posting about it, but I didn't quite get it. So can you explain it? It is fantastic. It's the longest running, largest masquerade ball in the history of the country. And I've been on crew or cast for about five years. Last year, we did a tentative swamp monster to see if they'd even like having water themed performances. And so I was in full prosthetics, looking terribly gory, scaring children, um, <laughs> and doing sleight of hand magic to make sure that they would actually talk to me, even though I was miming everything. And uh, this year, we're actually being brought back into this magnificent ballroom, where not only do we have an outdoor area with part of my crew and a couple of collaborators, but also an inside area. And against Labyrinth of Jarrus, it's about 1,600 people, all dressed to the nines in fantasy where you see fairies and you see trolls and you see creatures and you see princesses and you just see anything you can imagine that came out of a fairy tale or the Labyrinth movie, as an example, shows up to this ball. And it's really the who's who of Hollywood costuming where just the people watching is worth the price of the ticket. Wow. I've never heard of that. It's incredible. Oh, you should go. That makes Comic-Con look silly, huh? Uh, yeah, a lot of the same people go to Comic Con, but at Labyrinth, you all of a sudden get the people that also have that classic Phantom of the Opera costuming love. So it's just lush. I mean, visually lush. People dream up all kinds of things. You know, you have the knights and you have all that kind of stuff too. But it's really spectacular. And it's interesting because at that particular event, again, I've been there for five years. What I normally see at that event is normally what pop culture picks up on in about four years. So it's a couple years ahead of any trend, but the people are really nice and they have shows going all night long. So really thrilled to be back there with a bunch of mermaids and a merman this year. I could see you there all dressed up, Helena. I could. You think? Yes, I could. I could see you at the ball all dressed up. I really could. You know, uh, uh, we probably talked about this last time you were on, but I owned an acting company for 10 years. We did kind of a Benny Hill version of a medieval feast. So I kind of get that because we had a medieval wedding, my wife and I, and about half the people there, including family, were all dressed up, and and it was fun. We had a good time with it. So I understand what you're talking about, and I kind of get it. Uh, And it oh, makes, it's incredible. And yeah. the fact that it's built more in downtown Los Angeles, which is spectacular, Art Nouveau, Art Deco. And I mean, that's the not the kind of place, place you would picture anything that's a little bit off kilter either. No, I think they were really drawn to it because it does bring some couture elements, but also it brings any element of people. You know, not everyone is dressed up with an hour long costuming procedure there. Right. You know, people just show up in a formal and a mask too. But some of them take it really extreme, and it's just it's magnificent visually to just see all this creativity. I love it so much. Um, but yeah, so mermaids, 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 mermaids everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew mermaids were going to become this popular? What do you tell people when you're at a party and you're just standing there and they say, what do you do for a living? What do you tell people? I own a mermaid company. <laughs> <laughs> At which point they normally look at me and they like make sure I'm drinking water and they're like, well, you do what? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, no, really, I heard a mermaid company on one of the biggest mermaid companies now in the United States. And it, you know, it, but it's been incredible. I've been able to go places I never have been able to work before because obviously California has so many pools. Um, but, you know, we've been at Sony, we've been at Paramount, we've been at the Getty Center. We've been at like Gay Days Anaheim. And then we're actually really excited because We've got Tall Ships Festival coming up in September, oh, where Tall Ships Festival is where all the ancient ships come in. Oh, yeah. And they are docking in Dana Point, and the Ocean Institute in Dana Point has actually hired us to do their first ever live mermaid exhibit, where we're converting with them one of their tanks into a mermaid interactive history and legends exhibit to teach kids about folklore. Huh. But it's going to be incredible. It's this massive tank, and we're having meetings to figure out, okay, what are we putting in it, and how are we going to make it really memorable? Did the last Pirates movie really help you? No, not at all. Really? Okay, I was wondering, because yeah. of the mermaids in it, I didn't know if that helped. 
Uh, no, I, I mean, the thing that I do is uh, mermaid school. I run L.A. Mermaid School as well. So L.A. Mermaid School, I've never had a product of mine go so, so well regarded. And we ended up in Marie Claire. We ended up in E and backstage. And it went viral internationally. So all of a sudden we had, you know, the Italian press coming to talk to myself and my crew about this magic stuff we do for live parties. And I've never experienced that. It was, I mean, it was a huge blessing and just, I'm so thankful to the different companies that worked with us on it. Well, you know, people might be wondering why we have you on a horse show. Well, of course, in the past, you've been a lady knight and have you had much time for horses? Um, no, my, unfortunately, my last horse uh, passed, uh, Casanova, which is the big black one I used to always work with. Mm-hmm. So um, I took a bit of time off from that because Casanova was a very, very large loss to me. Um, he was my best friend. And he was one of the once-in-a-lifetime horses, where I think most horse people are lucky to have a horse where it's that special, special thing that changes your life. And Casanova did that for me. So the odd thing is, if you actually look at my company seal, it's a seahorse. And it's because that transition point in my life where I still have unicorns. <laughs> so now instead of horses, we have unicorns. But um, the seahorse is actually a representation of my knight background as well as my aquatic background merging into this company. Because right now we're in summer, winter we do knights, we do do the unicorns where we actually have the full-on draft horses that are fully decked out. We do some amount of archery during the winter. And I also, of course, um, I do work as an exercise rider periodically for friends when they have illness and that kind of stuff. So staying into it, which is nice, um, going through a bunch of old saddles right now because all of my comparisons and stuff have been storing. But it's just, it's waiting for that right time. I think probably within the next year or so, you're going to see me a lot more on the horse scene again because of some things that are coming up. But unfortunately, I can't talk about them yet. <laughs> so I can just say we've got unicorns, and I'm playing with unicorns, which is a really good alternative for horses right now. And they're, of course, real in about 16 hands high. But it's, it's been a very interesting transition. But something that I needed the time um, because my horse was, uh, he was my best friend. So right. when you lose someone like that dramatically, then you just take a little bit of time to breathe. We understand that. We've all been down that road before. Virginia, we have to have you on sooner than uh, three years, okay? <laughs> I would love that. I love talking to you. <laughs> What's your website? Uh, the company website is Shiro's, S-H-E-R-O-E-S, entertainment.com. And my personal is, of course, Virginia Hankins, H-A-N-K-I-N-S.com. Thank oh, you. And, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Definitely check that out. I'm going to be doing some mounted archery stuff, I think, in Nevada in this upcoming year. Sounds good. Thank you, Virginia. Thank you. You're Best welcome. wishes to you. Oh, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. Cut right there. Thanks, Virginia. That was great. Oh, yeah, totally. You, yeah, well, it's been great. You caught me in a time where, like, stuff is happening. <laughs> well, you know, and I've been watching your Facebook, and I saw, well, i got to get her on soon. So, <laughs> like, uh, But it, yeah. I didn't realize it had been three years either, so I'm glad we got to yeah. catch up again. Yeah, and thank you also for being, you know, understanding and kind about the fact that my horse died. <laughs> oh, no, we've because, all been there. I've, you know, we've been there. We've been there, believe me. <laughs> we've all been there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, and it's, it's good, good that you take some time. It's good that you take some time. You 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 can't recover from that. You have to live a, a different life for a little while when they when they move on to better things. You know, especially when it's your mm-hmm. lifetime one. I mean, we've all had other yeah. horses, right? And they come and go. But when it's your lifetime one, I think it was three years till I got my next one. So yeah, yeah. And it's like I'm starting to kind of look around because now my business is stabilizing, but it's like. It's also, you're making a relationship commitment when you have a horse. And, well, now where you, know, you live, you're making a financial commitment, too. <laughs> I mean, well, that, too. Yeah. I mean, thankfully, I live on horse property. But, you know, I like having horses that, you know, is, are the right ones that you just have until they pass. Or, ultimately, they get retired based on work. So, yeah, I'm starting to keep my eye open. I'm looking for Spanish because I love the Spanish horses. But, you know, the one that's the times right, I think the right one's going to cross my path and also not a horse in the barn again. All right, great. Well, if we see a Spanish one come up that uh, looks interesting, I'll let you know. Oh, I'd love that. Thank you.
Dr. Rose's Remedies Skin Treatment Salve and Spray are 100% all-natural products. They are anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, antiviral, and antifungal. Dr. Rose's are made with all human-grade ingredients and are safe and effective for treatment for all manner of cuts and scrapes on your horse. And Dr. Rose's is the must-have product here at the Horse Radio Network headquarters to keep PT Scooter's delicate white pasterns free from dew poisoning and scratches. Ask for Dr. Rose's at your local tax store or feed supplier or visit them online at drrosesremedies.com. That's drrosesremedies.com. Well, now coming up, we have some women from the Western New York Polo Club. They're going to be doing an exhibition at the Walnut Hill Driving Competition. It's the world's largest carriage competition of its kind, and it is the 44th anniversary of that. We're going to talk more about that a little later, but first we have to meet our polo players. We have Anna Campbell. Hi, Anna. Hi, how are you? Good. It's so good to talk to you. Now, you're both uh, students at Alfred University, right? Yes. Um, I'll be a senior this fall, and Cassandra will be a sophomore. And they have a polo club? Yep, we uh, we've been working actually pretty recently. Um, last fall, um, I came in with my high school teammate Cassandra, and um, we both we worked to start the club, and it was approved by USPA um, this January. And so, yeah, it's very recent. Brand how new. many <laughs> how many college polo clubs are there? They're they're getting there. Uh, are they? You know, yeah. Harvard's got one. Oh, really? So these There's guys are in really good company. That, yeah, there's not too. I mean, like I think forty or fifty across the U.S. That's but enough. Not, That's it's, enough it's to get started. There's room for growth. <laughs> there is. And who who is your teammate? Why don't you introduce uh, Cassandra to us? Yeah. Um, well, Cassandra Muschlegel, she's played um, for Western New York Polo for 11 years now. Um, so, yeah, we were high school teammates. And um, she, I'll let her introduce herself and talk a little bit about her major at Alfred. Welcome, Cassandra. Well, thank you. Now you are, so you guys, you and Anna were, um, you were high school teammates. Does that mean you were, so you were playing with your polo club when you were high school, in high school? Yeah. Anna and I both started when we were about 10 years old. So. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, well, you 10 year olds coordinated <laughs> enough to ride a horse and whack a ball at the same time. Well, they have no fear at 10. <laughs> that's when they got to, you know, that's when it's all about the Yahoo. But uh, did, was, was polo, were polo ponies your first mounts or did you, were you introduced to riding a different discipline before polo? Um, my great grandfather did civil war reenactments. Oh, so cool. I've been riding pretty much since I was a baby. Very so cool. moving into polo was a very it, it it's as it was a natural thing for you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Not only that, all of her ponies were were uh, were used to guns, so they noises didn't bother them at all, right? <laughs> well, we actually don't use our own horses. Our polo coach Terry supplies all the horses for us. Terry and Rob Donnan. Oh, cool! Very good. Yeah. What do you love about polo, Cassandra? Um, the the adrenaline rush for sure. <laughs> I bet. And Anna, what, now you guys, I know polo, uh, they they have different rankings in polo, and there's there's a handicap. Is it the same way in, in college polo? How does that work? Um, for college polo, I mean, with players can apply, like, for a handicap, but for actual college polo, that doesn't apply. Um, so it's really, like, like some college players will play professionally, um, like throughout the summer or they, they can travel, um, and they can like get a handicap, but in the actual game, like for intercollegiate, um, polo, that, that handicap doesn't, um, give them an advantage necessarily like during the game or anything like that. Gotcha. So it doesn't apply. So- now, mm-hmm. I go pretty regularly to Newport Polo here in New England, um, and it's it's great because there's just not a bad seat in the house and it's so well attended. It, it's a bit of a production, you know, it's very theatrical. And of course, um, it's the pitch it's called, right? A polo pitch is your field. Am I wrong? Uh, in saying I mean, that? I'm sure it could, oh, it definitely could be. I mean, if they call it up there, then we'll go with that. <laughs> oh, okay. What do I you don't call know it? Do you call from. it the field? What do you call it? <laughs> Um, yeah, polo field. Yeah. yeah okay. I don't know. Where did I get pitched from? Then? I don't know. 
I don't know. Anyway, I don't know, but I like so, it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do too, right? Let's make it a thing. We can make it a thing. That's what we do here. Mm-hmm. So um in Helena's world of unicorns playing polo ponies <laughs> on their pitches, um, one of the good things that we love the most are the breakouts. So the, again, I'm making up words because I don't I have not no idea what I'm looking at. Um right. so a player will hit the ball and it, you know, mm-hmm. takes off down the field and then there's like the mad dash for to right. own the ball. Do you love that? Or is that like, oh, crap, here we go again? Because that's what the no, spectator's uh, like. No, it's definitely, um, it definitely takes a player, like, who knows what they're doing to be able to, like, maintain that ball control at those higher speeds. Yep. Um, and that's, I mean, that's why polo is so fun, because you have, like, those moments where um, it's very, like, intense and it's very fast. And so when you get those breakaways um, and, you know, you're able to take a ball from one end of the field to the other, um, it's definitely what people like to see. And it's, it's also, you know, a lot of fun for the players. And when you get into a group situation, um, there's, it looks like there's a, there's obviously rules, right. That you have to follow for the safety of the riders and for the horses. How much control do you actually have when you're in a group situation like that? Obviously you're aware of the rules. You have a certain amount of control over your very well-trained polo ponies. Um, what is, how much of it is luck and how much of it is actual strategic skill when you're in those tight quarters? Um, well, it really depends on if the horse kicks the ball or if someone bumps you off of the line. Like, it's really luck of the draw, pretty much. And then, and then how well you handle that draw. Yeah, how how you react to where the ball goes and what your opponent's doing. Okay. Yeah, I, I could, think you yeah. having those like those like fine tuned skills will help you in that setting. Like kind of like the better player you are, um, you can like you know have a faster like reaction time or just be able to handle that situation a little bit better. Is yours an all girls team? Yes, we used to have a boys team, but all of the boys graduated. That was it. And they were gone. It's hard to find <laughs> find boy riders nowadays. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> It's true. If only the boys knew that there, there were so many girls who would love boy riders, they would all I take know. they would all take it up. If only they knew. They just gotta, so you missing out, that's for sure. So do either of you want to? And Anna, you can answer this. Do either of you want to do full time or go professional? Um, I think it's something that I want to be around um, in some sort of capacity. Um, you know, like for the rest of my life. Um, we had to work pretty closely with um, United States Polo Association, like USPA, to start the team and everything like that. Um, and I'm a business major at Offord State, and so my for my last semester, so I have to do an internship, so I'm trying to get it with them and uh, in some way, like, work for the organization in the future. Um, so in one way or another, whether that's, you know, playing or working colonies during the summer or more on, like, the administrative side of it, just still being involved. I had the uh, opportunity to do an Equestrian Legends episode with Sunny Hale, who's a you know woman woman legend in polo, and uh, it, it was fascinating to hear her life story. I have to send you guys the link so you can take a listen to it, but uh, it was just yep. fascinating to hear that uh, all about Sunny. And so women are coming up in the sport. It's not just all good looking Brazilian guys anymore. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, Why do you think women are getting involved in the sport? <laughs> yeah, the women well. have figured it out too. <laughs> We're smart like that, Glenn. <laughs> do you think that there's going to be more and more? I mean, you see it now on on the professional side too. I mean, a lot of them still come are coming out of South America, but there are more and more Americans making the big uh, the big level teams too, right? Yes. Um, it pretty much comes down to finances and horses. So. Yeah, you need a sponsor, don't you? You can't do this without yeah. a sponsor. Yeah, you definitely do. Yeah, no question about that. Now, when you guys travel, that's a good question. When you travel and uh, you play other teams, do you bring your own horses, or are you using their horses when you get there? Um, generally, we ride the horses at the place where we're playing. Okay. But we have taken our horses to some tournaments that were around where our barn is. So that works a lot like the Intercollegiate Equestrian Association, too. They yeah. Were, yeah. Okay. Got it. Do, does your college have one of those, uh, an equestrian team? They do. We have uh, a stock seat team and an English team. 
how did I not know anything about Alfred University? Do, do, Helena, you're from New York. You, you probably knew about Alfred University. Yeah, I had a friend who actually attended Alfred. Yeah. Very smart, creative, and now successful woman. She loved her experience there. That's about all I know of it, though. <laughs> but, you know, she's, oh, no, she's a very um, trusted friend, so if she liked it. I'll take her word for it. There you go. <laughs> Well, you guys, thank you so much. Now, let's talk a little bit about Walnut Hill. You have a, you're have you going to be doing a demonstration there at the driving competition, right? Yes. Do you know when? Um, I, I believe the date is August 7th and 8th. Um, I think we're doing an exhibition Friday night, and I think Saturday at, like, noon or something like that. Okay. Um, but, yeah, no, we're really excited for that. We get to show off our polo ponies and a bunch of the people who are still involved in the program. So this is, um, we cut, we have covered this for the driving radio show for a number of years now. I've never gotten there personally, but I hope to soon. This is one of the most exclusive driving shows in the country. I mean, some beautiful carriages and turnouts and horses. I mean, some of the most spectacular horses. Um, and it's just a neat, neat show. It's a pleasure show, so it's not uh, a CDE like we're, we're, right. we're used to seeing. This is a pleasure show. It's meant to, for turnouts. They judge you on how well your outfit matches the carriage, which matches the time frame and the horse from which it came. And it's just a really beautiful show. So I'm, I'm a little jealous that you guys are getting to go this year. No, we're so excited. Um, we always have like a really great turnout and it's just, you know, it's fun to go out there and play just to play and not necessarily have it. Um, it's such like a, well, I gotta tell you when you're up there, the Belgian, uh, the Morrisville college, Belgian six horse hitch is going to be there and they're going to be doing demonstrations uh, with the draft horse hitch. When Helene and I had the opportunity to go to the Pertron world Congress last year. And if you can get a ride on the wagon with the six horse hitch, Oh gosh! Take it. It is so Talk cool. Talk about adrenaline rush. Yes. <laughs> we will be looking out for that then. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get on the wagon. Enjoy it. Uh, yeah. Wink, smile, whatever you have to do. Get on the wagon. Get on the wagon. We went on. I went. On, I went on an eight horse hitch with them, and we went out of the arena. And they said, "Well, do you want to open them up?" And it was like, "Oh my god!" I mean, they each have like four reins in each hand, and they let those percherons go, and we were flying. It was incredible. There's a lot of power there. So if you can get on it, get on it for a ride. Will do. You'll love that. You won't be able to reach the ground with your mallet, though. It's very high up. <laughs> <laughs> so, it would be quite the challenge to play, uh, play on the Yeah, it would. <laughs> do you guys have a website? We have. Um, we don't have a website yet, but we do have a Facebook page, um, okay. which talks a little bit about um, the Alfred State Polo Program. And it's really cool. It's just like Facebook.com like, slash Alfred State Polo. Alfred State Polo. All right, um, good. So you can go there and get updates on when we're playing and just kind of information on, like, team members and everything like that. Well, thank you guys for joining us. It's so good to learn about this. We've never talked about uh, University Polo before, so I'm glad you guys are out there and having fun. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. And good luck, oh, at, pleasure. The, uh, good luck at the Carriage Show. Thank you. Well, that was fun, and we want to thank the people from Walnut Hill for letting us know about the polo uh, that was going to be on going on over there. They have uh, they have the Belgian his six horse hitch going to be doing demonstrations. They have a barbecue. They they do. Uh, they have Scottish pipes and drums. It's quite a show, and I, I do. Wendy and I are dying to go sometime. So mm. hopefully we'll get up there. It, it looks like a neat neat event. Although I'd probably have to buy new clothes. They all dress pretty fancy. They do. Yeah. This is a, this is, a, yeah. Super, <laughs> yeah. super fancy. Exactly. It's all right. I'll have to buy some new clothes. <laughs> yes. I'll you, I'm sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed you've been having a couple of uh, listeners asking you about buying outfits too. So that's great. Yes. Sir. Yes, sir. I, I love it. I love it. Our fox hunters go over to chasing a fox and our regular horse people come over to flirting with the world. It's perfect. Terrific. Well, let's do this. Let's do our Kickstarter pick of the week. And this week, I'm, I picked this particular product because I thought it was really cool. And also in honor of International Helmet Awareness Day, which is coming up on August the 1st. Check your helmets, people. Get, uh, look inside your helmet. See the date. If the date's more than five years old, you need a new helmet. The, Indeed. The foam deteriorates. And by the way, it comes up faster than you think. I looked at my helmet, my riding at my horse helmet yep. and i discovered it's eight years old and i swear i just got it 
that's how quickly time flies. And it does, yeah. You know? Yeah. What? Wait, no, no, no. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. It cannot be eight years old because I got you it. got that fancy Troxel, right? The Sierra. I uh, well, the, the, I use my Troxel too. That's the leather one. That's more than five years old now. No, and it can't be. the other one I was using on a regular basis, which is a Tipperary, was eight years old. Okay. It, it's amazing. And then I thought, well, I'll look at my bike helmet. I wonder if bike helmets, because I ride my bike almost every day. And I thought, well, I wonder if bike helmets have a date. And, of course, they do. And my bike yeah. helmet was almost nine years old. So Well, the protective like, material has a half-life, and so it breaks yeah, down. the foam. Totally yeah, especially down. in you know in hot weather and get us all sweaty. That helps it break down. So all of those things. Plus, it's just disgusting. Helmets are kind of disgusting if you think about it, the inside yeah. of them. So you might as well buy a new one every once in a while. Well, gosh. So this is what's happening. August 1st, go to riders, the number four helmets.com, and you'll find a list of all the retailers online and locally who are discounting their helmets, some up to 20%. So you never find helmets on sale. This is like the one day of the year you will. Yeah. So I'm going to be going August 1st online and buying my new helmet uh, to replace my previous one. And I also went out and replaced my bike helmet. And now I wish I didn't. Because I Why found... Why do you have two separate helmets? Duh. Because bike helmets are made differently. They're actually made for different uses. And uh, uh, they're they're just a little more aerodynamic because you're going faster. You know, we're doing 25 miles an hour. <laughs> I'd rather wear the helmet that's going <laughs> to that's gonna protect me from a harder fall. Well, they're actually both made for different things. So they're designed... You know, for the different things. I know, uh, I know, I know. So that's why I have two. But anyway, and it's cool. So we, I was looking on Kickstarter. <laughs> I, I'm a little proud riding around on my bicycle in my, I have two helmets though. I have a nice Charles Owen velvet hunting helmet, which is beautiful. Um, and then I have a Tipperary, super aerodynamic. Yeah, well, that one would look okay like, riding your bike. Cool. Uh, yeah, so I ride that. I use that one. by the local kids if you're riding your, you're wearing your other one. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like being the total dark for their for their. Heart. Sometimes I do wear my my velvet helmet <laughs> on my bike. All right, back to Kickstarter. Kickstarter, okay, I found a bicycle helmet that I think is going to change bicycle helmets. They're not expensive bicycle helmets. They're like twenty five bucks. I, I mean, the most expensive ones are like fifty to one hundred dollars uh, that you would buy for a regular bicyclist like me. Now, I'm sure they're much more for professionals, but uh, you know, for average people like me, who goes to the bike shop or Walmart to buy their bike helmet. So I paid like $30. Well, there's one on Kickstarter that's really cool, and it makes me wonder why this hasn't been done before. And as always, do you want to let's, – let's listen to it. Okay. okay. The world's first smart bicycle helmet that provides integrated lights with brake and turn signals. I love cycling because of the freedom it gives me to get around quickly and easily. But I often feel invisible at night, even with my bike lights on. That's why I created Lumos. I wanted to take control of my own safety by building a helmet that will make me more visible to everyone on the road. Lumos is a next-generation helmet that brings intuitive and common-sense features to your most important piece of gear. At its core, Lumos is a comfortable helmet designed to be both sleek and strong. With more than 60 built-in LEDs, Lumos really helps you stand out at night. Its lights make you more visible in all directions because they are higher and larger than traditional bicycle mounted lights. And since they are a part of the helmet, you don't have to worry about your lights being stolen off your bicycle or forgotten at home. With a built-in accelerometer, Lumos detects when you're slowing down and automatically displays a brake light so that people behind you can easily see it's and a helmet react with brake to your lights. changing speed. Hand turn signals are often hard to see at night. Lumos displays left and right turn signals controlled by a wireless remote on your handlebar so that drivers can see your intentions and give you space. We built Lumos to be rugged and water resistant. With one button to turn on and simple micro USB charging, Lumos is easy to use and fits seamlessly into your daily routine. Well, you get the idea. So it's got lights on the front and back, and the back lights are always on, and the front white lights are always on. So they got red lights in the back front, and it has turn signal lights on the back sides of the helmet with an arrow that <laughs> points that. to the direction you're going. I don't know why nobody's thought of this before, but it has this controller, wireless controller. It's just a left and right button. You press on your uh, on your handlebars and that puts your turn signals on brake lights come on automatically when you slow down 
that's very cool. Um, and it's just neat. I mean, where people look, he's right. They don't, your bike lights tend to be way low. Yeah. At your tires, well, people aren't looking down there, so they're looking. You know, they they tend to look up, and it's right on the back of your helmet. The helmet looks the same, uh, like any other bike helmet, otherwise. But what a great idea this guy had! Now he's he. If you pledge ninety nine dollars, you actually get a helmet. Now um, that's uh, the complete helmet package for ninety nine dollars. He needed one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars to send this to manufacturing. With 20 days to go, he has 2,871 backers for $366,000. I, I got to come up with something. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, Kickstarter is changing the way products are introduced in this world. This it's guy lovely. would have never been able probably to get this done. He would have had to bring it to one of the major helmet manufacturers, Bell or one of them, Schwinn, and they would have taken the idea, paid him a little bit of money and said, go away. And they would have t- taken it. Why haven't they done something like this? So mm-hmm. I hope he has, I sure hope he has the patents on this baby um, so that one of them doesn't steal it. But what a great idea. He's been getting a lot of press about it. And it, I think it's just going to, he'll be at a half a million dollars by the time this is done. What a great idea. So neat stuff. Neat stuff. Well, Next. well can, you, can you get one? Like, why can't you get one now? You can uh, pledge $99. Remember the way Kickstarter works right. is that these aren't even probably in manufacturing yet. I didn't read when they're due to ship. Oh, 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 oh. Delivery right, right. Uh, is, let's see here, delivery May of 2016, so not even till next year. Uh Delivery. Okay. So we just they probably have just done some prototypes yes. and stuff like that, right? Yep. That's how that works. Okay. Yep. And that they were looking for the money to really, you know, make it work. But Oh, I love this. Just love it. What a great idea. And they look cool. I mean, it's kind of neat the way they have the lights set up and the way it works. You know, and next you know we'll best... see these with Rod Charles Owen. We have lights on their helmets. Uh please. I I, I would like to have a a message appear on the back of my riding helmet that says slow the bleep down. Yes, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you look at this bike helmet too, on the front they have lights that go across yes. the front so you it provides light to see where you're going. Why couldn't they why haven't they done that on a riding helmet? Because there's lots well, of well, because room we typically a, don't ride in the dark. Well, a lot of people do, though, especially the endurance riders. They're riding in the dark all the time in their races. So all you right. got to wonder, there's a lot of room in a helmet for the batteries. That's the thing that usually takes up the most room. But in a helmet. Oh, and they're heavy. Yeah. you you got to put in the batteries someplace. But you could do that in a riding helmet. Yeah. I, I think you're going to well, see maybe that Maybe you could just do a solar panel. Have the whole top be a solar panel? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that would do if you crashed you glass oh everywhere. God. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, they, they have to have some kind of new foil technology. I like. I always think technology is like ten years ahead of where, where it, it is. is. Yeah, yeah. We should be in flying um, cars by now. By the way. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh man, wouldn't that be nice? Wait, let's go back to this helmet thing. So, yep. all right. And oh, this is what I was going to say about it. So these guys are in um, Boston, and I will tell you. Oh, aren't they? I didn't even written, see that. Yeah, yeah. It's it. It says they're they're. Located in Boston, it, Boston is one of the most challenging places for bicyclists mm. to stay alive, <laughs> and and it's not because of the antique roadways. No, it's because of Bostonians. <laughs> it's the people. It yeah, seriously exactly. is like they are. They're people who hate cyclists. Hate them. Now, when you're driving around Boston, you're frustrated to begin with. So adding an extra degree of difficulty, like driving around a bicyclist, fine. I can see well, where the, the roads are all cow paths that are about five feet wide. <laughs> they're five feet wide. Yeah. They're paved. They're not paved. They're half paved. Yeah. They're potholes. <laughs> There's cars you know, parked got everywhere. Ruts. They're cobbled. Yeah, yeah. it's what I'm saying. It's challenging enough to get around. But typically the bicyclists are, are for the most part, are pretty um, conscientious and they stay away from the super dangerous. They have to, to stay alive. <laughs> but I don't know. I've seen some Scary, angry confrontations between bicyclists and and drivers. I occasionally listen to a radio station out of Boston, and they, this topic comes up all the time about bicyclists. They really do hate bicyclists up there. I don't know what it they is. They do. They do. <laughs> and yet, but yet, Boston is such a green, I progressive, know. highly educated city that you know that's where you're going to have people who pedal under their own power. Awesome. I think it's great. It's just amazing how. It's just amazing the contrast between those who, you know, believe in 
pedal power and those who don't. It's they're they're complete opposite ends of the spectrum. But you know, in a Boston city, I can see riding your bike just to get to places faster. You know, if if uh, you got if works twenty minutes away and you can ride your bike, why not? Yeah, uh, you get there a lot faster. Yeah, in New York, it. they're all like, <laughs> "Nice knowing you." Yeah, <laughs> there's no hate. The there's only just... ones that ride bike is New York or those uh, bike uh, delivery guys. Uh, and the even crazy then, ones. if you're in a car or a truck or one of those, it's, they aim for you. Vans. Yeah, they do. They're like, <laughs> see, I grew up in the country where you know, a little country town where every kid rode their bike. I mean, we didn't. We rode our bikes everywhere. We'd drive our bikes five miles to school. Uh, yeah. and, and you know, you just always rode your bike everywhere. And so I still do. I mean, I love riding bike. I just do it be, to, for exercise and fun. And of course, you know, where I ride, I have no cars at all. So that's yeah. kind of nice, but it, yeah, I just, I still like riding bike. Well, we, Grace and I rode down to the beach yesterday. We have, um, there's a private beach here in little Compton, which is absolutely stunning. And, um, if you want to access it by car, you have to be a member, which is ridiculously, you know, exclusive like you got to get on a waiting list and then it's you know like a thousand or so dollar a couple thousand dollars a year blah 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 so you know she's like mom i know a secret way down but we got to ride our bikes and i was like oh i gotta ride my bike Uh -uh -uh, hurts my butt blah 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 right so i'm like helena you rode all over god's creation when you were a kid what's the problem so i was like all right grace throw your towel in a backpack let's go yeah, that's fine. Let's do it. We had the best time. We had the best time. It was so much shorter than you think it is. You know, it's like two miles, maybe two and a quarter miles because we went the secret way. And then when the pavement ends, we're on this like grassy dirt road, which is all secret and twisty. And and then you finally end up like 20 feet from the beach. <laughs> like, wow, I just felt like a kid. It was awesome. It is fun. I'm telling you, it is fun. Yeah, so get on your bikes. Get on your bikes. If you can't get on your horses, get on your bikes. Well, thank you, everybody. By the way, I'll post a link to that Kickstarter project if you're interested. And one of the other reasons I brought it up, as I know just by Facebook, that we have a lot of our listeners whose spouses ride bike. They may not ride horse, but they are active bike riders. So this is something uh, for them, too. Christmas is coming. Uh, So we'll, uh, we'll post that up there as well. Well, next week, you're going to have Jennifer with you. It's going to be you and Jennifer. I am off to the Podcast Movement 2015, which is the second year for this uh, conference. And it's now become the largest podcasting conference in the country. There'll be about 1,000 podcasters there. And I'm looking forward to that. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, We have about 20 members of the Florida Podcasting Association heading over. And uh, we will be easily identifiable with our wristbands and our T-shirts representing the state of Florida. So I'm looking forward to this. It's been a long time since I've been to a podcasting conference. So I I hope we come back with new ideas and uh, new things that we can add to our programming. And you are the, you're like the king now, podcasting. (laughs) Like, you're the man. There's some people that are much bigger than we are, but there's not a lot of them. I haven't made it. They're doing the podcasting uh, Hall of Fame awards on fr- uh, next week, but I didn't. I'm not in it. So uh, uh, maybe next year. Maybe next year. Somebody has to nominate me, Helena. So. Oh, I can do that. Get on oh, it yeah. for next year, okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, I'll send you the form and I'll fill it out for you. Yeah, you just do sign it. Yeah, <laughs> you can sign my name. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We appreciate it. We'll uh, we'll be back again next week. And be sure to check out the website, StableScoop.com, for all the past episodes, all the way back uh, almost eight years now. And we're going to be celebrating. Yeah. By the way. Yeah. Your fancy leather helmet. Yeah. Will be five years old in four days. How do you know that? Because I just found a picture of you on the StableScoop Facebook page. Oh, really? It's you and, (laughs) yep, it's you and Beaker. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's when we lived in Kentucky. It's before yep. I had Scooter. It, it's before you had Scooter. And, yep, there you are with your fancy helmet on. And the date was 2000 and... I don't know what date it was. It was 2010. Oh, five July years. 27th, 2010. God, time flies. Yep, yep. I, so, so you need a new fancy helmet, too. Jeez, I got to get shopping. August 1st, coming up. Can't wait. August 1st? 
That's what, how much, uh, International Helmet Awareness Day, August oh, 1st. Oh, International, yes, 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 yes. Everybody's, yeah, go, go shopping. Go shopping. All right, thanks, Alina. Thanks, Glenn. We'll be back next week, won't we? We will. Until then, happy scooping. <laughs>